So um, we, we've got on our uh, targetedjustice.com and targetedjustice.org, we've got a little one minute video. I, I encourage you to see that. Um, uh, Armando has been very helpful on, on this uh, technique as well. But this is a gauss meter um, that costs about 30 bucks, maybe 35 bucks. Um, you can buy these many places and this is just one brand. What's important is it's an analog meter, not a digital meter. This is analog technology, it's 40, 50 year old technology. And the heart of the system is called a Hall Effect Transducer. It's an analog circuit that detects electromagnetic fields. And it's actually sensitive only in certain directions. So if you turn it like this or like this, it picks up a different electromagnetic field. So um, the, the Hall Effect sen sensor for this instrument is placed vertically. So when you put it on top of your head, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sense it. And um, so... Okay. So it, it, it's, we encourage you to try it. You can buy these yourself and try it yourself. So it also what's important is it's not just targeted individuals that are being tracked. Everyone in the United States um, is being tracked. And we've, we've tried this on, on many, many people. Um, it's clear that, that most people in Europe are also being uh, tracked and targeted. And we strongly suspect that it's global, although we haven't visited every country in the world to prove that. We strongly suspect if there's satellites that are in motion, constantly in motion, and they're able to track everyone in the United States, the satellite doesn't shut off just because it gets over the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean. It's going to track anybody on a ship. It's going to continue to track somebody that's out over in Japan or the Philippines or Russia or China uh, just as easily. So clearly if the capability from satellites exists over North America and Europe, it clearly has the capability to track everyone worldwide. And Explain you can show what satellites are there. So uh, the, 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 the GPS satellites, this program has been um, um, started back in the 1970s, actually. And they, the, the Air Force Space Command at the time, this was before it was called the U.S. Space Force, it was called the Air Force Space Command. Um, they actually developed this technology and it became operational, we've showed, due to the targeting of specific individuals like Harlan Gerard and Norman Rabin, um, that uh, this technology was operational by uh, 1984. So they were able to track people on the ground and without a cell phone, this is before there were cell phones and before there were cell towers, they were able to track people on the ground and hit them on the top of the head. And both Harlan Gerard and Norman Raven filed lawsuits documenting what was happening to them in the early 90s. So we've got, that's compelling uh, evidence that shows uh, what they were, and of course the, the courts dismissed them and said they were crazy, but they were telling the truth. So we've got we've got courtroom evidence um, to back up our claims, and you can find this on our timeline. We've done a, a web tab that's called it's under the technology section, and it's called timeline. And we show the development of the GPS technology starting in the 1970s. They launched the first satellite starting around. Um, um, 1982 or 83. Um, by 1984, they had enough satellites. I think they had seven or eight satellites in orbit so that they could track people on the ground and hit them on the top of the head. So both Harlan and Norman were well aware that it was satellites right away. There was no other explanation how they could drive anywhere around into, I, I believe um, Harlan was living in Pennsylvania and Norman was living in New York. And they both tried driving to get away from it, went all over the Northeast, and they couldn't get away from the signal. So they immediately deduced this has to be a satellite. Um, so we know this technology exists. The, the Air Force Space Command had this technology operational long before Russia or China had it operational. Uh, the Russians did not have a operational system until the late 90s. And then due to funding difficulties, the, the program, the, the satellite basically became inoperative until the early 2000s. Chinese uh, started putting their network together uh, in, in the early 2000s and it wasn't fully operational, I think until around 2010. So the Air Force Space Command, uh, and prior to them, US, uh, the, the US Air Force Space Command, and then followed by the US Space Force, um, have had this system operational since about 1984. Um, they got all of the satellites operational by 1992, and we know that because they put out an announcement saying that they had canceled the program, which was their code word for the system is fully operational. This is, um, for, for those that want the history lesson, this is, uh, the, there's a company called the Titan Corporation in, in San Leandro, California, just, just outside of Oakland. 
um, that designed and built the Vercator weapons. And uh, that company fully admits their engineers published a technical paper. You can find it on our website. Um, it's, uh, um, they basically describe how um, the Titan Corporation built these under contract to the U.S. Air Force um, for the Strategic Defense Initiative Organization. It's called SDIO. And if you read carefully the technical paper these engineers identify, that's where they got the contract from. SDIO, that contract was run under the U.S. Air Force at the time. So um, they admit they built these weapons. They admit that they did it under contract with the SEIO. So people that thought the Reagan's Star Wars program was based on lasers, it's not. It was based on microwave beam forming weapons, and that's specifically the Vercator. If you look up that patent and read the Titan uh, engineer's technical paper where they describe all the different variations they made for the Vercator, um, you, you can see that it, it clearly implicates them and that they had their, their initial contract was for about 36 of these Vercator weapons, and there's a picture of them. It's kind of a blurry picture, but it shows they got about 36 of them, and um, so very, very helpful. So we encourage you to, to do this. Uh, Targeted Justice has been claiming since 2018 that everybody is being tracked by GPS satellites. It's grossly illegal. It's illegal surveillance, and if we can get Congress to shut down the tracking, guess what? The directed energy weapons will stop. The neurological attacks will stop. The V2K will stop. If they can't track you, they can't hit you. We, so we need to shut down the tracking. That literally would shut down the entire program. So that's why this is so important. So uh, we encourage you to get your own uh, $30 and try, meter. And try it on non-TIs. And try it, and try it on non-TIs. You'll find that Show everyone them. is being tracked. So and you they, can't they make will this become up. upset that they are being tracked. Yes, absolutely. So... Uh, go online. You can get these. It's, it's made by a company called Gauss Master, and it's a fully analog system. There may be others out there that are analog. Um, the di we found by experience the digital ones are easily hacked remotely, and you, you, may be, you might get a few minutes out of its operation, but they will hack it and disable it. This one can also be affected. They're able to turn down the sensitivity on it remotely, but not shut it down. So um, if you have problems with it, um, there, there's modifications you can make, and we're, we will publish some information on that pretty soon. But basically it's done by uh, amplifying the output, the analog output, with an analog, um, an ad it's basically an analog volume meter, and it turns up the signal and makes it more sensitive and louder. So that's not rocket science. And, and uh, so those that, that want to develop or build your own from scratch, the, the heart of the system is called a Hall Effect Transducer. You can buy them online for about $2.